Today at shoptap.com, we're gonna be doing a Haldex service on our Mark 7 Alltrack. Okay, so today we're gonna to be doing a Haldex service on our Alltrack. Uh, this Haldex service is something that you would do in all the current model or really any Haldex vehicle. Uh, they're gonna have a service interval. So uh, this car, I believe the service intervals, intervals on these is 30,000. Uh, that's gonna be true for pretty much all Mark 7 or MQB cars. The previous generations, I think were 40,000 for Gen 4 cars. So uh, we're gonna be draining it, filling it, and there is no serviceable filter on this, but we are gonna show you removing the pump to clean out the screen in the pump because that is something that can collect stuff. This car does not have a lot of mileage, so I don't expect to have dirty fluid uh, or probably a lot of stuff on that pump, but we'll, we'll find out. This car has uh, 34,000 miles, uh, but did come from Colorado, so it may have actually used the Haldex uh, fairly recently or fairly often during the winter months. So let's get into that DIY. Okay, so first we're going to crack our fill plug loose. You wanna do this just to make sure that if you do need to fill it and you have a problem with it, with your fill plug stripping that you don't have to uh, run it dry and you'll you won't end up stranded because you can't fill it up in the trans fill plug and now we're going to crack the drain plug loose and we will drain our fluid out Doesn't look too dirty. Now here we are, our Haldex pump. I'm gonna crack these 10 millimeters loose. And what you're gonna wanna do whenever you're doing this service is, and we'll link to a kit, well, you're gonna wanna replace these bolts for the Haldex pump, this, the drain plugs, as then the seals for this pump if you're gonna be taking it out. And so we'll link to all that stuff in the description where you can find the info on those parts. Okay, so when you're taking this pump out, you're actually gonna have, there is a mounting for the harness over here. Kind of squeeze it and push it through and it will allow you to pull the harness from this side over. And you're gonna need to use that to disconnect this and unplug it from the vehicle. Okay, so the plug for the pump actually plugs in right here at the top of this module. So you have to kind of unhook it from where it snaps into the the housing itself and then unplug it. So you're probably gonna have to deal with a little bit of dirt and, cr and, and kind of crud inside the connector, which means you have to kind of push back on the electrical, on the tab and then kind of work the connector back. Okay, so this is probably not something you have to do. I unbolted this. There are two 10 millimeters on this side here and here that actually hold that in place. They also have Torx bits as well. I had trouble getting onto this connector to get it unplugged for the pump, so I just swung that thing loose to allow us to unplug it. So this is the plug we're looking at to allow us to release that pump out of the way. And this should make it a lot easier to unplug. You need to push back on this tab back here and then slide this thing up. Unfortunately, when things get a lot of dirt in there, like this, this system has, they get hard to remove. So you really wanna just kinda take that and wiggle it to get that off. There we go. And we can drop this pump out of place. Okay, so this is the screen we're gonna be cleaning up. It looks like we can actually just unbolt it from here. So what we're probably gonna do is take it, unbolt it, and then clean it up so that we can blow everything out instead of trying to clean it and blow it back in. So we're gonna take these, what looks like small torque screws out and then clean this thing up. All right, so we're gonna need a T10 Torx bit for this. This is pretty small. It actually appears that there's more fluid in there than it is necessarily dirt. There is some particles on this screen, but nothing too much to speak of here. So along the screen, you'll see some contaminants here. This car has fairly low mileage, so I wouldn't expect it to be so much. And depending on how much you maybe launch your car, that may get worse. So we're going to spray this thing this way with brake clean to kind of get all the contaminants out and then reinstall. Now you're not going to find a torque spec on these because they're not, this isn't it's intended to be serviced like this. So I would just say snug them up, be careful. I can't imagine more than maybe 10 newton meters probably at the most is all you really need. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our pump and 
we have cleaned up this mating surface here and we're going to feed this over your drive shaft mounting there and then you want to make sure your orientation is good on this you have your mounting holes on the top and bottom here my suggestion is to kind of put a little bit of pressure on it and then wiggle until it lines up and you'll kind of feel it pop in and then it's seated all the way against there without any bolts in there yet so um, before you go ahead and worry about any of that stuff I'm going to get this module plugged back in and then I'll route the I'll route the connections for all that and then get this module mounted up just to make sure I have all the slack I need to install this into its place and this one you're going to have to do a lot by feel because again there's no you don't have a lot of sight here in terms of the the places where this harness snaps in all right now that's all in we can take our mounting bolts for the pump itself and again these should be replaced when you're doing it and i'm going to throw these bolts back on this mounting module here we'll make sure we link to put to give you guys the torque spec for these pump bolts as well as the drain plug and fill plug bolts whenever we tighten them up. Okay, so here we have our Haldex tool. We filled it, we have it blocked off and we want to insert this into our diff, into our fill, and then obviously pump this fluid in. This gives us the ability to do so without uh, any major issue of any kind. I'm actually gonna open this up and then let some of this air out so that we can kind of pull that and I'm just going to squeeze it up until we get some of this air out of here. So now I have pushed all that air out. We're going to insert this end into the diff and then pump this out that's fluid in. All right, we're going to take this fill plug out the rest of the way and our pump has been cleaned out and the strainer has been cleaned, all that fluids out as well and now we're ready to fill. Okay, so now we had a run out. What we're going to do is put our fill plug in. We're going to cycle that key to get that pump to prime. And then we're going to double check our level. We also are going to want to check our temperature with our OB-11. Now once you fill your Haldex up to the top, what you're going to want to do is put the plug back in temporarily, cycle the key, and make sure you have the correct fluid temperature to check the level. So the way you would do that is with a scan tool like OBD11 or VADCOM. We're going to show you with OBD11, and you're going to go into your list of control modules, scroll down to your all-wheel drive. We're going to go to live data, and we have, we can look at clutch temperature, we can look at all these different temperature settings here and we can read our temperature settings. Okay, so you can see here our fluid level temp or fluid temperatures are around 27, 28 degrees centigrade. This is going to be the temperature within spec. You want to do it between 20 and 40 degrees centigrade. This is what you actually are going to be looking at to make sure you check your level. So what you're going to do is remove your drain plug, then fill it back up until it comes out as a stream and then your fluid is now completely set properly. All right, so now that we've checked our temperature and we filled it once, we cycled our key to get that pump running, we have now ready to start filling it again just to make sure that we got everything correct here. So we're gonna fill this back up until we get a steady stream and then we'll be all set. Thank you so much for watching our DIY on how to perform a Haldex service on a Mark 7 Alltrack. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.